know that moment in a movie when everything is chaotic and crazy, and then the camera zooms in on the main character, and the main character says, "You're probably wondering how I got here." Well, I feel like that main character today, because I'm just a farm girl from upstate New York, and now I'm doing a PhD at the Technical University of Munich, and giving a TEDx talk in Nuremberg. So you're probably wondering how I got here. I'm going to take you on a journey, and we're going to fly out of Nuremberg, and we're going to go to New York, but not that New York. Today, we're going a little bit further north, to upstate New York, to my hometown. Of Cherry Valley, population 1,200. This is me and my sisters in the backyard of the house my parents built. I grew up in one of the most beautiful places on earth: rolling hills, endless blue skies, cornfields for days. I was so lucky to have access to nature. Safety, community, family. I'm from a middle-class family. I went to public school, but I had everything I needed. Life was simple, but it wasn't always easy. See, I come from one of the poorest counties in upstate New York. Fifty percent of the children I went to school with. Live below the poverty line. My graduating class was 41 people. This year's graduating class is down to 33. Upstate New York is shrinking. Young people are fleeing to find jobs, opportunities. Upstate New York sits at the crux of the Rust Belt and Appalachia. The Rust Belt. Is a string of cities across the Midwest that were decimated by increased globalization and deindustrialization. Appalachia is a mountain range that stretches from the south to the north of the United States, similar to the Rust Belt, with energy transitions and decreases in coal mining. Entire communities lost their livelihoods. Appalachia has some of the highest rates of poverty in the country. In the lowest high school graduation rates, upstate New York struggles from many of these issues: unemployment, depopulation, brain drain, an opioid crisis. Politicians call upstate New York the other New York because it's so far away geographically and imaginatively. From New York City, they have described it as looking like Appalachia. They've said it is not the New York we dream of. Politicians have called upstate New York a ghost town. Told upstate New Yorkers to move to another state, to abandon their homes, to find jobs elsewhere. Upstate New Yorkers describe themselves as having a psychology. Of demise, they can't promise their children a future. They don't have much in the way of hopes or aspirations. This is what I've been told about my home my whole life. So it's no wonder I left. My PhD project is on lost regions of innovation, regions that have been left behind. By today's innovation economy, but in the field of science technology studies, we look at innovation a little bit differently. We don't just focus on the optimistic economic perspective. We don't assume that innovation is always good. We look at the social, cultural, and political aspects of innovation, the impacts that it has on society. We want to understand why some places. Like Silicon Valley become innovation hubs, while other places get left behind. So when I started this project on lost regions of innovation, I knew where to look because I grew up in one. But when I started researching upstate New York, 
I was surprised. Because I saw headlines like, America's microchip resurgence runs through upstate New York, and billions of dollars are being invested in semiconductor fabrication facilities in the upstate New York region. And that upstate New York is globally recognized as a microchip innovation hub. There's a geopolitical war happening right now, and it may be one that you haven't even heard of. It's called the chip war. But what is a chip? A microchip, a semiconductor? Chips are necessary components of all of our digital devices, from our phones to our computers to our cars. But they're also in weapons of defense. And this is why nations across the globe are racing to have power over the world's most advanced technologies. This is why countries have developed policies specifically to increase capacity of microchip manufacturing. The U.S. Chips and Science Act, for example, signed into law in 2022, promises $54 billion to reshore microchips, to bring them back to the U.S. where they were invented in Silicon Valley. And the Chips Act has a very specific formula for how it plans to do so. And within that formula, it promises to revitalize Rust Belt regions. The CHIPS Act plans to give federal funding to semiconductor companies as incentives for them to move to Rust Belt regions, partner with local universities, and create a pipeline of people to work in those companies. And through this, it hopes to create regional innovation and growth. But what I'm describing isn't just happening in the CHIPS Act or even in the United States. It's happening all over the world. It's called innovation policy. And innovation policy tends to want to create regions, transform regions into one place, and that place is Silicon Valley. It feels like every day there's a new Silicon somewhere or somewhere valley popping up. And so often, the places that are being faced with the imperative to innovate are lagging regions. Now, let's go back to upstate New York. Because what I'm describing is a model that's happening in this region. And that's the triple helix model. And what surprised me when I started doing my research in upstate New York was not only that innovation is happening there, but that it's been happening for 40 years. For 40 years, upstate New York has tried to transform into what it calls Tech Valley. And it's done a lot. It established a university, the State University of New York Polytechnic, New York's first public poly. There is government funding available, only significantly increased by the CHIPS Act. And there is industry in the region. There are semiconductor firms in upstate New York or building semiconductor fabrication facilities as we speak. And all of this together, ideally, creates regional innovation. But I had to ask, why does a place that I know to be lagging behind from lived experience have this microchip innovation hub? How do these two things fit together? Why does a model that doesn't seem to be bringing the population of upstate New York forward, why is that written into a national policy with global implications? These are questions I had. So I went home and I talked to folks. I talk to folks who work at SUNY Poly, who work in local government, in the semiconductor industry, on regional development. I talk to community activists, journalists, residents. I went to semiconductor fabrication facilities. I went to college campuses. I walked the streets of Rust Belt cities in upstate New York. And over many cups of Utica coffee, I learned something. Quite simple. I learned that there is a disconnect. On the one side, you see Main Street Utica, a Rust Belt city in upstate New York. The windows are boarded up. It truly looks abandoned. But on the other, you see something different. There's color. There's art. There's life. There are folks working just as hard 
as policymakers to make upstate New York a desirable place to live, to stay. But they don't have the funding. Community activists are trying to organize live music events, wayfinding murals, but they don't have the funding. Nevertheless, amongst the rubble, they are trying to build. And miles away, there are these multi-billion dollar, futuristic, semiconductor fabrication facilities being built up around them. But they feel isolated, exclusive, disconnected. Upstate New Yorkers are struggling with basic social welfare issues. They don't have access to safe or affordable housing, good health care, good K-12 education, public transportation, funding for community events. These are things that they want and they need, and they do not see these problems being solved by Tech Valley. So through my research, I came up with a few ways that I think these policies can work better. And this isn't just for upstate New York. This isn't just through the CHIPS Act. This is for any region or nation implementing innovation policy in lagging regions. The first is elevation. The narrative about Rust Belt regions needs to change. Upstate New Yorkers are told that they do not have worth. And because they do not have worth, therefore they need innovation policy for their futures. But this needs to flip. They need to be told that they are worth so much that they deserve this innovation policy, that they deserve a future. The next is engagement. Upstate New Yorkers did not feel like part of the conversation about the transformation happening to them. Not for them, not with them, and certainly not by them. Policymakers and companies should be having town halls. They should be bringing the community in, hearing voices about how they want their futures to look and how they can engage with those. I mentioned that folks in upstate New York lack funding, but semiconductor companies are getting billions of dollars in investments from the government. Why not have a semiconductor company sponsor a live music event, sponsor a local sports team, create more appreciation and awareness, engage in the community? And finally, education. Upstate New Yorkers were not always aware of what microchips are, how relevant it is that they are being developed, manufactured in the upstate New York region not only on a regional level, but on a national and even global one. They were not aware of the opportunities that this gave them and their children. I study Europe's largest semiconductor research and development hub in Leuven, Belgium, called IMEC, and they do a great job of bringing in the community. They have open days where folks are allowed to come in and see what's happening. Semiconductor companies in upstate New York should be giving tours to the community. They should be in K-12 through classrooms, teaching children about the relevance of this technology, about the opportunities that they will have in their futures. What I'm describing actually has a name. It's called the quadruple helix model. Upstate New York has a university. It has government funding, and it has industry, but it's missing one key component, and that's society. Society needs to be taken seriously as a stakeholder in regional transformation. And only then can regional innovation flourish. So why am I here? Why am I giving a TEDx talk? I'm here because I think this matters beyond upstate New York, beyond the United States, for any place trying to implement innovation policy for regional revitalization. It matters because policy should work for the people. 
because those in Rust Belt regions should have voice. Policymakers and economists look 10, 20 years into the future, but folks in poverty look at tomorrow. What do they want their tomorrows to look like? But I'm here for another reason. I'm here because upstate New York is my home. It's my family. I'm here for the future that I could not see as a child. I want my niece and nephew to grow up with a future brighter than the one I had. I want them to grow up with the opportunity to stay. Thank you.